Welcome to Reanimator Reviews. I'm Rayanne, and today I'm going to talk about Don't Be Afraid of the Dark, I believe it's 2010 version. It's not 2010, it's 2020. We were in a time warp. Welcome to the future, everyone. So the movie starts out with kind of a flashback of Blackwood um, talking to a small grate in his basement. He looks kind of crazy. He's missing a whole bunch of teeth, and he's yelling for his child, you know to come back, be saved from whatever's taking him. And uh, an unfortunate uh, thing happens to his maid as he just like clunks her on the head and then puts this thing in her mouth to knock her teeth out. And luckily that's where they cut because ugh, that's disgusting. Teeth things and eye things go through me. Pop a fingernail off in a movie, meh. Pop an eyeball out in a movie, no, no thank you. So, we go to the present where Kim and her boyfriend are in this beautiful house which happens to be Blackwoods as her boyfriend is trying to kind of refurbish everything. Now that I'm thinking about it, I don't remember if they're married or not. I don't think they are. I think they're boyfriend-girlfriend, but they live together, they work together. And he's trying to do this big project to bring the house and all of the paintings, architecture, everything within the house back to its former glory. As you do in that line of work. Very cool stuff, actually. Um, Sally is uh, his daughter from a previous relationship. She was sent by her mom to live with a uh, dude whose name I can't remember, and Kim, the girlfriend. And they don't really go too deep into why, but it's kind of like the mom just can't handle it right now. She can't deal with Sally. So she's sent over. Sally's not having a good time. Sally does not immediately have a good reception of Kim. Kim is trying really, really hard. It's really difficult when you're, I'm a stepmom, when you're in that position where you have, you know, that awkwardness initially, you know, you don't really know what to do or how, what to say, but you want to make sure the kid knows like, hey, I'm nice. I'm here for you. I was lucky enough that uh, my stepson was so young at the time. He was just kind of like, yeah, you're cool. All right. I'm gonna call you mom. And I was like, all right, cool. I'm, I'm gonna call you your name. So I love him. Um, we note weird little things happening. Uh, Sally finds this little dish filled with little tiny teeth, which we assume are baby teeth or child's teeth or whatever. They're baby teeth because your, your teeth don't get bigger as you get bigger. That was a dumb thing to say. But we're quarantined and we're going a little crazy. So we find out that in the basement of this house, there are little pixies or tooth fairies that thrive on human teeth, human bones, they want it all. They try to trick Sally into thinking that she's, you know, one of their friends and blah, blah, blah. But of course things go sour. And what do people do in horror movies is not listen to the child when things are going down. I'm gonna leave it off here as it is spoiler free. What did I like about this movie? I loved the gloomy, dark, ominous atmosphere in this house. No matter how brightly lit it was, you just got that sense of dread and it just kept coming. There was really no relief from it until there was a shot when they were in the city or they were, you know, far away from the property. Even the on-property shots, you're just kind of like, mm, I'm feeling a little tense. I liked that for once in a movie, Kim was listening to Sally and trying to convince the other adults around her, like, we need to get her out of here. There's something really wrong happening. And she was doing, you know, weird research in libraries, finding very strange, um, not open to the public paintings that kind of reinforced everything Sally was saying, but just nobody would listen. And you really felt for these characters because you're just really rooting for them because you see all the things they see and you want everyone else to believe it. Um, there is a particular scene towards the end. I'm not going to spoil it, but I love this scene and it goes through me every time and I scream when the person screams. Gross. Uh, there's 
there's not a lot of gore in this movie, but there is um, a scene where the caregiver or the caretaker of the, the property just gets like sliced and diced and it is very satisfying and that's a good scene. What did I dislike about this movie? Sometimes Sally came off a little bratty and annoying and you just like didn't really want to be on her side when she's just, oh, mom told me I'm not supposed to do this. I have to go. I have to take my Adderall, uh, blah, 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 blah. And you're like, eh. But like kids, that's kids, I guess. Um, I felt like for the most part, Katie Holmes, who plays Kim, did a really good job. At some points, it was kind of, it, it took you out a little bit the way she she acted during like the really dramatic parts like I didn't quite believe her but who knows who knows who knows what you thought about that let me know down below um I wish there would have been a lot more gore in this movie they could have done some disgusting grotesque things but they didn't which is, I guess it's fine. I really want to watch the, um, the original film. I think it's from, is it from the seventies? I think it's from the seventies. I need to get my hands on that because every time I, I searched, you know, to see who, who played who, what their names were, two movies popped up and I believe they're related and I'm going to try to find it. And even if they're not related, I'm still probably going to watch it. So I think I would rate this probably like, I don't know, like a 2.5 or a 2 out of 5. I enjoy watching this movie when I do watch it. Uh, bonus dislike, I felt like the creatures, they could have done a lot cooler things with the way they looked. And sometimes it was just so much CG that it was like, oh, well, that's not really, that's not scary. They're just kind of hokey looking. And I feel like maybe they could have done the close-up shots with like a, a practical creature or something. And maybe the motion they could have, you know, used a practical creature and then just like tweaked it a little bit, not just the purely CG stuff, but that's coming from someone who's real snobby about practical effects. So take that as you will. But I really, I thought that they could have manufactured a creature that looked way, way, way cooler. That eats teeth. Gross. Um, so yeah, those are my thoughts on the movie. I have watched this several times. This, when I recently rewatched it, it was one of those, like, I'm going to put a movie on and, um, uh, meal prep and do some dishes and kind of like peek out of the corner of my eye every now and then to watch what was going on with the action. And it's a fun watch. I recommend it. Um, have you seen this movie? What are your thoughts? Leave me a comment down below. Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Reanimator Reviews, Twitter and Instagram at Reanimator. Don't forget to hit the bell for bill. Hit the bell for all further notifications of up, uploads and live streams. It is so hard to talk. I haven't even been stuck in this house that long, and I'm already like can't English, can't talk. So sorry. Um, you can find my solo as well as reviews with the groom on iTunes. Thank you to the Farsighted Network. Please don't forget to check out all of their awesome creators and content as well. How are you guys doing? Are you keeping yourselves busy? Are you learning new crafts? Are you cleaning out your house? Are you redecorating things? Are you cutting your hair? Please don't cut your hair because when I go back to the salon, I'm, I'm already envisioning a lot of bangs I'm going to have to fix. But in all seriousness, I hope all of you are doing well, staying healthy, taking care of each other, checking in on each other, and watching a whole lot of horror movies. And I love you guys so much. See you later.